if anybody had to ask me 15 years back before I met the Lord that you know God is going to give you this kind of life I would have said no because I had never tasted this life okay have you seen some people they like to drink alcohol why do they like to drink alcohol? If you ask some ladies, do you like, feel like drinking alcohol? Some of them will say, Phew, I once tasted it. Was, <laughs> Come on. There must have been a time when somebody said, why don't you take it? And you took the glass because of a lot of uh, speaking. And you put that first sip and you felt like... Ugh! But how is it that person can drink like a fish? Because he has pleasure. There is heavenly pleasure and there is worldly pleasure. Praise be to God. When the Lord begins to break you, my friend, you no longer have a taste for the worldly pleasure, but you have a taste for the heavenly pleasure. And the day you begin to taste the heavenly pleasure, I tell you, there is no more taste for the worldly pleasure at all. It's nothing. Because worldly pleasure will always snatch your soul, your health, your wealth, your relationship and everything it will destroy. But praise be to God, heavenly pleasure will bring you good health. It will bring your blessing into your marriage, into your relationship, into your children, into your finances, into everything. What kind of pleasure are you drawing every day of your life? And let me tell you, when a person is having pleasure, he never gets tired. Have you seen that? I don't know, when I was small, I don't know about you, when I was small, we used to play a game called carom. You know what's a carom? We used to play a game of carom. And especially when we used to get holidays, we would sit and play carom. And believe me, we would start in the morning till night, we would sit and play, and we would not get tired. And we would not even know how hours had gone, because it gave us what? It gave us what? Pleasure. So, when you go through the journey when God begins to break you and when you begin to, to experience that true God kind of life, when you put to death your corrupted nature, praise be to God, you get such pleasure that you never get tired. This brother who came from Australia, I, I was asking him, brother, how many hours journey you did? And he was traveling and traveling and somebody died on the flight, so the flight flew back back about 9 hours and praise God it was a delay of 9 hours and he went through such a time and, and, and you know when you go through all this it's tiring and this brother came and said brother when I look at your timetable every 2 days you are traveling for example tomorrow I am traveling tomorrow this moment I will be on the flight traveling to Bangalore when I land there one brother is coming with the car at the airport and then I drive from uh, Bangalore to Madurai the whole night to be in the morning to preach the gospel now how come brother you don't get tired you know I don't get tired because I draw pleasure there is great pleasure when God begins to break you in those corrupted areas of your life and the new life of Christ begins to born in you and begins to manifest in you, you begin to taste it and now it's so tasty that you're saying, God, give me more. I want more. I want more. I want more. You know, today the doctor said, listen, you have donated blood so you got to take a lot of rest I said yes you got to eat food yes you got to do this yes do I look like I donated blood I'm asking you I'm still the same because my mind is not on what I gave my mind is on what with whom I am now and with whose word am I speaking and what relationship I have with him Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why do you think the Bible says that Jesus embraced the cross? The Bible
Bible says he embraced the cross. You know, you know, when I met that brother from Australia, he hugged me and would not leave me for more than three minutes. And he squeezed me. Why was he squeezing so much? Because he loves me. How can Jesus love the cross so much that he embraced the cross with joy? Huh? Because it is only when he sacrifices his life, does not live his life for himself, but lives it for the Lord, you and I can be saved. In the same way, he is saying to you and me, if you are my disciple, carry your, your, carry your cross. How many times? Daily. Jesus carried the cross on that day. For what? To die. You are carrying your cross for what? To die to yourself. So when you come to this banqueting table of Eucharist, the breaking of the bread, you are saying, yes Lord, I am coming to this banqueting table carrying my cross because I want to die in these areas, Lord. And can you empower me, Lord, that I can put it to death and never bring life into that so that it dies forever and I can live that life that is pleasing to you, Father. Hallelujah. But when trouble comes, we tell the Lord, Lord, can you take the cross and give it to my spouse? And if not to my spouse, give it to the next door neighbor, troubling me so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The breaking of the bread. Jesus broke the bread and he had the last supper. The disciples, they believed that this Jesus is the Messiah. He would fight against the Romans and destroy them and establish his kingdom and he shall be the king and we shall, we are the ones who will be sitting on the right and the left. They had their dreams, they had their desires, they left everything and they followed Jesus. And the day came when all their dreams were shattered. They saw that this man who is the son of God performed such great signs and wonders and raised the dead. The same man, when he's crucified, he doesn't use any of those powers. And right before the eyes, he is dead. When he is dead, their dreams are also dead. And there are two men on the journey to Emmaus talking about what they had witnessed about the Messiah. And the word of God says that Jesus began to walk with them and they could not recognize Jesus. And Jesus began to ask them what they were talking about. And they said, how is it you do not know what happened in Jerusalem? How is it you are the only person who does not know what happened in Jerusalem? Every person knows what happened in Jerusalem about the death of Jesus. And they began to speak. And Jesus began to interpret the scriptures and began to speak to them on the journey. And they reached the village by evening. And Jesus pretended to be going further. And these two men said to Jesus, It's already late. Why do you want to take the journey? Why don't you come and stay with us tonight? And Jesus went and stayed there. Now came the time to have supper and Jesus took bread in his hands, gave thanks to God, blessed and broke the bread. When they saw, when they saw what Jesus did, 
the bible says their eyes were opened and they recognized the master and jesus disappeared right in their presence and the bible says they did not even wait for a moment they left that place and came back to jerusalem that night how can they travel all the way from emmaus to jerusalem without a torch light without the street light but what they saw they could not wait even till morning sunrise they took their journey that very moment and they left that place and came to jerusalem my friend when you partake the body and blood of jesus when the hope when the body and blood of jesus is raised up and when you begin to look at that with the eyes of faith what is hidden from the world will be revealed to you through the power of the holy spirit your spiritual eyes shall be open your spiritual eyes shall be open your spiritual eyes shall be open for a natural man it will still look a piece of bread but for a spiritual man god will begin to give you revelation and understanding in the spiritual realm which a natural man will never be able to understand hallelujah hallelujah it is by this action that jesus his disciples will recognize him after his resurrection can you take a pause for a moment and ask the lord and talk to him and say talk to him with what kind of preparation do you come to the eucharistic table do you come with a thanksgiving heart thanking god for his mighty works that is his creation thanking god for the plan of redemption thanking god for the sanctification or are you just coming to the eucharist because it's your an obligation are you coming to the eucharist speaking to the lord lord i am the body of christ just as you gave thanks to the father bless the bread and broke the blood lord teach me to come to every eucharist with a repentant heart teach me o oh lord to come to crucify myself on that altar to offer my life my desires my plans all of me on that altar to be crucified forever teach me o oh lord to die to myself to be so willing to allow those nails to crucify my desires to crucify my flesh that is all the time tempting me and putting pressure to go away from you to crucify my offense my bitterness my jealousy my anger to crucify anything and everything that is taking me away from the will of the father jesus you did not live your life for yourself but you lived your life for your father teach me o oh lord in this eucharist and every eucharist that you who have given me this freedom snatched me from the claws of satan destroyed that corruption in me and gave me a new heart a new life made me a new creation 
you have given me the freedom to make a choice lord even though you paid the ransom and redeemed me with your own life and with your own blood yet many a times i choose to choose the old master satan and i carry out his will i carry out the will of satan to go and fulfill the lust of the flesh by walking into sin lord the two men when they saw that when you broke the bread their eyes were open they recognized you jesus jesus when i come to the breaking of bread teach me to recognize my weaknesses teach me to recognize those things that hinder my relationship with you teach me to recognize the tactics and the snares of satan that is deceiving me making me spiritually blind to recognize you o lord jesus come on my friend speak to him he is listening to every word that is coming from your heart make that decision lord i did not even know that there is so much of power in the eucharist all this time i was attending the eucharist because i thought it was an obligation but today i realize oh lord you are inviting me to this banqueting table just as you fed the disciples on that night when you were betrayed and you were going through the greatest trial of your life lord you want to feed me with your body and blood so that in every trial of my life i do not fall into failure but i strengthen myself with your body and blood and walk that journey pleasing in your sight lord this eucharist is not for an individual but it's for all those who are faithful all those who have made you the lord of your life all those who are baptized and are royal priesthood it's a banquet of assembly of those who believe in you and every one of us are going to partake of that one bread that is Christ all of us are so different lord unique not a duplicate but we when we partake of that one bread Christ we enter into communion with you and from you into one body in him you are the source oh lord that unites each and every one of us lord help me to realize that i am united with my fellow brother and sister through you so that i no longer live a life of corruption and disunity and quarrel and fight but i live a life united in christ Thank you Lord for this Eucharistic assembly that this Eucharist is celebrated in the assembly of the faithful and this is the visible expression of the church the Roman Catholic Church where the faithful come together and receive the body of Christ together 
and are united in Christ together. Lord, thank you for your holy sacrifice. That sacrifice of yours, Almighty Jesus, you are the Savior, the Messiah, In this sacrifice, O Lord, you offer your body, you offer your blood, you offer your own life. And we as the church offer our sacrifice of praise. We offer our sacrifice of thanksgiving. We offer spiritual sacrifice pure and holy thank you almighty god for the sacrament of Eucharist that we are united to Christ because Jesus you yourself said the one who eats my body the one who drinks my blood I dwell in him and he dwells in me my friend as you are pondering on this word if you are going through any affliction might be you are getting bad dreams might be you are getting bad thoughts wrong imaginations or you are afflicted with fear or any kind of those afflictions remember these words when you keep on saying Jesus I eat your body Jesus I drink your blood Jesus you dwell in me Jesus I dwell in you and you go for the Eucharist and as you receive you say these words again and again you will find yourself free from demonic activities you will find yourself free from depression suicidal tendencies you will find yourself free from lustful habits and addictions you will find yourself free from any kind of of demonic activity in your life it's so powerful it's so powerful can you speak to yourself right now Jesus I eat your body Jesus I drink your blood Jesus you dwell in me and I dwell in you can you say this and as you say look at any area of your life where you are being in in addiction you are in some affliction you get bad fearful dreams speak it and believe that even as you are saying these words believing spiritually you will experience total freedom from those bad dreams from those fearful dreams you will be set free from sexual sins Because as you say these words, you are, you are sharing, you are the sharers in his body and blood. It's a holy communion. It's not just a communion, but it's a holy communion. A communion of the divine and the natural. That Jesus calls you to share in his body and blood. And we now call it the holy thing everything in your spirit has become holy every corruption in you is destroyed by the blood of Jesus the book of Revelation says that we overcome the devil we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony this holy communion is also called the bread of angels it is also called the bread from heaven it is a medicine for immolity
you are going to live for all eternity in the heavenly kingdom through the body and blood of Jesus the holy eucharist is also called the holy mass it is called the holy mass because the mystery of salvation is accomplished and how is this mystery accomplished it is accomplished that due at the end of the eucharist we who have received the body and blood of jesus are sent forth on a mission through the faithfulness of god so that each one of us will go and fulfill god's will in their daily life just as jesus blessed the disciples the apostles to carry out the mission when you are called to this banqueting table god anoints you for a mission god anoints you for a mission god anoints you to carry out his plan and his purpose in your life reflect in your own life my friend after you receive the body and blood of jesus whose mission did you go to carry about did you make that decision that you are going to carry out god's mission or did you want to carry out your same old fleshy desires and all this time if you have been living a life a selfish life ask the lord the spirit of god is moving talk to the lord and tell him lord here i am surrendering myself to you i don't want to live my life for myself you paid the price on that cross and you shed your blood for me you paid the price in full and you set me free you are so loving mighty savior that you do not force on me to follow you you set me free and you're just walking by lord i don't want to live my life for myself i don't want to go to the old master satan and become a slave one more time oh lord i just want to follow you i make this choice oh lord to follow you and to carry out your will for my life thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord jesus praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah